Hey what's going on guys, Crazy here, welcome back to another Cyberpunk 2077 video and today let's talk about all of the ways in which you can become a lot more powerful in this game. I've compiled all of the data available, I went over everything regarding loot and progression, which is why in this video I want to go over everything you need to know about these topics, including leveling, acquiring items, augmenting your characters, investing points into skills and even doing special kinds Kind of tasks for really awesome bonus rewards. As always, if I miss anything, let me know in the comment section down below and let's jump right into it. First things first, let's take a look at how progression looks like in Cyberpunk 2077. And after all of the information that I've gathered, I've realized that there are four main layers of progression, each with several subcategories that can make things a lot more complicated, but also a lot more deeper when it comes to customization. This includes leveling and and perks, loot and stats, cyberware implants and finally we have the style that I'm going to explain a bit later on in the video. Let's begin with the leveling and perks. Perks basically modify and significantly enhance your character's power and it's likely going to be one of the first layers of progression that you will experience very early on in the game. Now despite the fact that we did not receive an official confirmation up until today, previous reports were suggesting that the maximum level would be level 50. Now skill points will be acquired every time you level up and you can then further spend them in any of the following skill categories. These include reflexes, body, intelligence, cool and finally we have the technical abilities. Now by default many of the more advanced perks will be grayed out in the beginning of the game and you will have to actually spend skill points into those specific trees to unlock the more advanced ones. That is why it has also been reported that you might even feel feel a bit weaker in the first few levels compared to the regular enemies, but it soon starts to jump up really quick after that. Now each skill category provides a few primary benefits by simply investing your points into them and then several subcategories of both passive and active kind of traits. Let's begin with reflexes, this is the main primary category that increases your evasion, crit chance and attack speed with the mantis blade, it also further modifies handguns, rifles and the mantis blade related skills. Then we have the technical ability, this increases your armor with each level that you get and improves proficiency when crafting items and using tech weapons against robot type enemies. It also further modifies crafting and engineering skills that you can find in its subcategories. Then we have the body, this uh, deals with health, stamina and boosts melee damage but it also further modifies shotguns, two handed melee and and of course the athletic skills. We have the cool skill, this is going to be all about you assassins out there or the stealth players and this is going to improve how quickly enemies can detect you, it's also going to increase your critical damage and resistance to various effects, but it further also modifies stealth and cold blood related skills. Lastly we also have the intelligence, this is for all of the netrunners or hackers out there and this is going to reduce the difficulty of hacking and it's going to increase your memory. It also further modifies devices and target hacking skills, which is going to be super useful if you're planning that route. Also another noteworthy fact about these skill categories is also the fact that if you invest points into these, they can unlock new dialogue options when talking to various NPCs, like for example if you have a high technical ability skill, you're going to be able to comment on, for example, on the technical side of a vehicle in missions relating to vehicles, and so on and so forth. But this brings us to the second layer of progression and these are going to be the loot types or the loot that you can get in this game. So there's going to be several types of loot as you would expect from most of the games out there including weapons, clothes, cyberware and even consumables that can be acquired by various means. Now all loot including items and consumables are stored into your main inventory cache which you can access quickly anytime you are in these apartment. So this is going to be your kind of like main apartment, the only one that you have in the game. What is cool about this is that the inventory in V's apartment is also shared with the one in your vehicle, so whenever you summon your vehicle, you can access the same stash from the vehicle's trunk, so that will come in handy quite a bit. Now as far as acquiring loot, so far we have identified four main ways of doing so. This includes enemy drops, quest rewards, vendors and finally we also have 
crafting. Let's begin with the loot drops, because you can get loot from pretty much anywhere. This includes enemy drops, loot caches and even randomly finding these items scattered in the world, especially when it comes to guns. Now there's going to be different rarities as you would expect from most RPGs out there, anywhere from common, rares, epics, all the way up to legendary items. These are going to be, of course, the most powerful of them all. There are also several weapon manufacturers in this game and if you played games for example like Borderlands, you are probably going to be quite familiarized with this concept because each of these manufacturers might provide a different kind of perk to those types of weapons. Like for example, the tech weapons are really great at using tracking kind of bullets among many other things. But we do have to talk a bit about the legendary loot because this one in particular comes with unique properties that can only be found on this type of loot and not any other type of item piece in the game. And as such, it will require some difficult choices to make if you want to get them. These choices could be quite easy, such as for example killing or sparing an enemy, but then there's also the question what if you are interested in keeping that NPC alive. In that case, you're probably going to have to make a pretty difficult choice. The second way to acquire loot is going to be done through the various vendors and shops that exist in Night City. Now these are going to be heavily dependent on your street cred and think of this as a form of reputation system that can be leveled up by simply completing side missions and other types of side content, especially ones involving the gangs of Night City. At least one item in the game that we know of will increase the rate at which you gain street cred XP and that is going to be the samurai jacket that we saw in one of the 2018 gameplay videos. But the higher your street cred is going to be, the more unique items you're going to be able to access at many of these vendors and as a matter of fact the high-end ones are going to require quite a high street cred kind of level. Now because your character's level doesn't come into play when picking up these items and equipping them as there is no real level restriction, this means that you can pick a really powerful item at the low level if you have enough street cred for that. That sounds actually really awesome, especially for those who are looking to complete side content instead of focusing on the main story. So you are getting rewarded in that process. And the next one is going to be rewards. It's been confirmed multiple times that I'm simply completing certain missions, be it main story ones or side quest related, can provide rewards at the end of them, which many of them could be quite useful. In fact, many of the people who got the chance to play the game did confirm that many of the special and powerful items are tied into some kind of side content or side mission that you will eventually want to go in and complete fully if you want to get access to them, which actually for a completionist like me and somebody who easily gets distracted by random things in the world sounds like a dream come true. Of course, the final method is going to be done through crafting. Now crafting has no class restriction by default, but you will need to invest points in the right perks if you want to make the most out of it, which comes in handy because you have that technical ability skill line that will likely play the bigger role right here when it comes to crafting the right type of gear. Now what type of gear can you craft? Well, it goes from anything like armor, shards for cyberware, weapon modules, special weapons, consumables, gadgets, and so on and so forth. Of course, you cannot craft directly clothes or cyberware, but you can craft the modifications, as I've said, for these, which will change the way they look, but also the way they function. This brings us to the third layer of progression that will make things even more interesting, because on top of all of these things, on top of all of these items, the skill points, the things you can invest and augment, there is another subset which comes in the form of the cyberware or the implants that you can apply to your character. So not all of the skills and abilities that you have will come from your skill tree, but also from these implants I was talking about. And just like all of the other types of loot, these can also be obtained as jobs, bought from vendors or given as rewards from missions. To apply cyberware onto your character, you have to visit a Ripper dock, which think of it as kind of like a surgeon of which there are quite many in Night City, including a few that are illicit, so um, you might want to be careful who you're messing with, because who knows 
what you end up with. But this means you won't be able to change your cyberware on the fly and you will need to actually visit these Ripper docs every time you want to change your build up. Um, but there is going to be of course 11 types of implant categories each with up to 3 possible slots that you can populate. For example something like the Raven MK4 Legendary Cyber Deck can give you a massive boost to your memory which in turn will let you easily use advanced forms of hacking against enemies and pretty much anything else that can be hacked into. So this is going to be an amazing item for all of the netrunners out there. Meanwhile in something like your arm slot you could install a really awesome melee augment such as the Mantis Blade or the other types of melee augments that can turn you into an absolute beast. So of course we didn't see the rest of them but it's pretty easy to assume that they are going to deal with all of these kinds of facets of your character's progression. This brings us to the fourth and final one which is going to be the style and even though we could debate if um, style is also going to play a role into your progression, for many out there it is an incentive to further, um, let's just say, change up their character. Even more so when we know from previous gameplay trailers that clothes indeed can display stats on them, so it's likely that this is going to play a huge role into that. Um, at the same start, we could also argue that your vehicle is going to play a big role into all of this. There's multiple classes of vehicles as you would expect, anywhere from the economy class all the way up to the luxury ones that are going to be extremely expensive but also way more performant. Like early on in the game, you just start up with a pretty rundown kind of vehicle that barely even gets started, and it also is going to feel quite slow low but as you progress in the game you are going to get access to these amazing vehicles um, it's going to make it much easier to traverse through the city which in turn should also mean that completing for example races um, going up against enemies or shootouts should be easier because of that and also maybe escaping from cops I'm pretty sure that there's going to be some really amazing um, chase scenes with really high-end vehicles being plastered all over YouTube when the game launches um, but this is it with most of the layers of progression in cyberpunk 2077 of course there's going to be a ton more in the game this is kind of like a general rule so that you can make a proper idea of how it all looks when the game comes out and so that you can better identify which is going to be the next thing that you will apply to your character as always if you enjoyed this video at any point it would be super awesome if you left a like on it and also don't forget to subscribe and activate that notification bell and i'll see you guys in the next one